Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 2D platform in Unity. As requested by many of you, we're going to start tackling refining our movements. We're going to start taking care of our eternal jumping and our walking on air features that we now have in our game. To do that, we're going to probably going to spend two or three videos on this subject. And we're going to begin with changing how our inputs and some other things in our code are going to be handled. Let's begin. So the very first thing we're going to do is that we're going to do something that is not necessarily going to change anything about our game, but it's just going to be a different way of doing something. Uh, throughout this tutorial series, I'm hoping to be able to show you a variety of different ways and how things get accomplished in Unity. And in this case, we're going to go over here to our player game object right here. And inside of it is where we have placed our player controller script. And inside this if you remember, we had two public variables that we declared. We called it RB for rigid body, and here's the rigid body and the animator, or anim, which was just the animator. And these are basically just we these are basically telling the scripts whenever in our scripts here, you know, whenever we need to call a rigid body or or refer to a rigid body in our code, we were saying, you know, there's a rigid body and we wanted to go a certain velocity and this was going to be the velocity we set it at and back here in unity this is this is how we told it what rigid body we were talking about because there's a bunch of rigid bodies in our game all these all these uh are ground and are are in our ground and there'll be other stuff in the game they're all rigid bodies we wanted to tell the script which rigid body we we're talking about otherwise it might have just taken the ground and moved it a certain velocity so that's how that is accomplished in unity and same thing with the animator i mean we only have one thing animated right now but in a game you could have lots of things animated you have to make sure that your script knows what you're referring to so and there's another way of doing this or being being able to tell the script to hey i'm just pulling the component the the component um in my inspector window without having to make it a public variable you can do it privately and the difference is that public means it'll be out here and private means that this will disappear and it will just be listed here in our script so we'll just go ahead and declare both our variables public and private and then right here in the void start window and if you remember the void start window it's it's basically you know what happens when you push play or when the scene begins uh, as it says start is called before the first frame update up here we're gonna go ahead and say at the start rb which we've declared here this is its name we're saying hey this guy who we call rb we want him to get a component as it just says right there, it's pretty straightforward. And then in this space, we want to tell them what component we're after. So the component we're after is the rigid body 2D. And then we don't need this these parentheses, or we don't need to put anything in this parentheses right now, but there are cases where we would, and we'll get to those later. And then we're going to put a semicolon down to close our line. And then I'm just going to copy this, control C. And I'm going to hit control V to paste. And then we're simply going to do the same thing with our animator. And animator. So it's the same thing. We're saying, hey, there's this thing called anim. It's an animator. and we wanted to get a certain component. We wanted to get the animator component, and that's right here. So when I hit save and go back, these two things will disappear, and they're gone. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change how we input information to the game. Input as in what keys we hit to move our player. So right now when I hit play, I hit the D key and he moves right, and I hit the A key and he moves left. And that's simply enough because that's what we told Unity what we wanted to do. We, we said we wanted our input to be a key and we wanted that key to be D, and likewise down here with A. And that's well and good for a very simple way of doing things, but 
we want to add more refinement to our game here. So we want to change up how we're inputting information into our, our code and our script. And this might not make sense right now, but as we go into the subsequent videos, it will definitely will make sense why we change things the way we are about to change them. So when we go over here into Unity and I go down to Edit and I go to Project Settings, we can see here that we have an input manager. And yours probably will look like this when you open it. And as you can see, we have the axes listed and there's a horizontal axis, which of course will be side to side or vertical axis, which will be up and down, which will be our jump. And then there's a bunch of other um, input items here. You know, this, this is for uh, shooting a gun or something. Here's our mouse commands and such. So over here, what we'll be working with right now is, is our horizontal movement. And as you can see, it already has it inputted that you can hit the right or left arrow and you can use the A or D key. And that's already placed right here in Unity. So we're going to close this out a second. Actually, no, you know what? I'm going to refer back to it. So let's open it back up. So go back into the script. And what we want to do right now is to change this is that the first thing we do is we want to create a new float and we're going to call that H direction. And we have to specify that we're calling H direction, or in this case, what it means is horizontal direction, because we are going to have another flow called vertical direction. We can't simply say direction, otherwise it'll get confusing. And this new float we're calling H direction is going to be input dot get axis parentheses, and we're going to type horizontal and, and then semicolon. Make a little space so we can just you could just see it a little clearer on the screen. So I'm creating a new float. I'm calling it H direction. It's an input command and it wants to get an axis. As opposed down here where we said get get a key, I want to get the horizontal axis. And so and in the argument here, and that's what that's what it's called inside of parentheses, by the way. When we put anything behind parentheses, they call it an argument. And and that's true for all coding. And in this case, the axis I want is the horizontal axis. Now I have to, just like down here, remember we put a, uh, we, we put a, we put quotation marks and we put running. And remember we had to write running lowercase because that's how we, that's how it was listed inside Unity. Same thing applies. You have to spell horizontal with a capital H exactly as it is here because that's exactly how it is here. This is the axis we are trying to get to. So now that we've done that, we are going to change this statement a little bit. Instead of input dot get key and the key code and all this other stuff, we're going to get rid of all that. And we're simply going to put here in the parentheses, h direction is going to be greater than zero. And down here, we're going to put roughly the same thing. And it's going to be less than zero and basically what we're saying is that when the when the direction when the when the number that's associated with the direction is positive when it's greater than zero we're moving to the right and when the number that's associated or the very um sorry the float that's associated with the direction is negative we are moving to the left and go back in here I can close this and I'm going to hit play and our guy moves from right to left just the same. So like I said earlier, it's does this doesn't make sense now. This whole video is basically we just retype things that we already typed. It, it might feel like we are going a bit backwards, but I like I said earlier, there are a variety of ways, I'm sorry, a variety of ways of doing things. And I want to make sure you see different things. And in this case, we we are changing things actually so that um, it'll it'll be it'll make a little more sense or be easier to uh, implement a lot of other things in terms of the other movements we want to add or refine and also the animations we want to use with them. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Like my video, subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter and support me on Patreon. All links are in the description below. See you next time.